This camera is definitely gonna die before I finish filming this. Let's do it. Hey guys, it's Lex at Lex Reads. I hope you guys have been doing well. I know it's been a minute. Um, this is the biggest unhaul I've ever done. I just want to start by saying that. Um, I am currently... This bedroom is an absolute disaster because I am packing and, and moving. And this time I'm not moving a hop and a skip. Um, I'm moving abroad. So I'm not taking... I mean, at this point, any of my books is the plan, like any of my physical books, just my ebook. Um, and so I figured what better time to go through the books that I have and, like, seriously think about whether or not I want to have or need to have all of them in my collection. So I have I've just, uh, I think it's about 40 books to go through, so let's just do it. I'm just going to start. Um, first, I'm getting rid of A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. Ca yep, mm-hmm. Um, Cavallaro. I never finished this book. I don't think I ever got more than, like, 60 pages in, and I tried a lot of times. Something about the writing style or the characters just wasn't doing it for me, which is a bummer, because I was really excited about this when I bought it. But I think there's someone out there who's really gonna enjoy this, so I'm gonna take most of these and, like, sell them to my, like, local, not half price books, we don't have a half price books, but it's the same kind of deal, you know, use bookstore, sell the books there. Yes. This one, I, I still feel kind of bad about getting rid of because I have, like, weird emotional attachments to things that I shouldn't. This is The Waking Land by Callie Bates. I received this book for free um, at a con from the publisher. Um, it's from Del Rey, who publishes some of my favorite things that I've read ever. Um, but I've had this for about four years at this point. It's like YA high fantasy, and I just don't think I'm gonna read it. So why keep paying on to it if I'm never gonna read it, you know? This one I have read. This is Sarah Desen's Along for the Ride. I've had this since I was like 15. I read it when I was 15. Um, I've been holding on to it since forever and I'm never gonna read it again. I'm not. I don't, I don't even tend to reach for YA contemporary as I'm sure you're aware if you've seen any video I've ever posted. That's like not the thing that I read. So I'm gonna pass this along to someone who will enjoy it more than me. Definitions of Indefinable Things by Whitney Taylor. I bought when I was a freshman or a sophomore in college from Thrift Books. Never read it, and at this point have no desire to read it. Um, I think if I had read this when I bought it, I think it maybe would have been one of my favorite books I had ever read. Like, I think it would be up there in my, like, kind brain when I think about, like, all the bright places and like perks of being a wallflower like I think it would have ended up on like that group of like my favorite books I've ever read but at this point it's just not really what I've been wanting to read and I've been holding on to it long enough there's someone out there who will enjoy it more than me okay. this one is uh, Morgan Matson since you've been gone I also haven't read this book I bought this one it was like really hyped and popular when it came out, I bought it used, like, a couple months later. But once again, I just don't read very much YA Contemporary. Like, that's just not the thing that I do often. And when I do, I feel like I have to be really passionate about it. And I'm just not passionate about that book. All right. All right, next we have another book I've never read. Oh, this is Eleanor in Park by Rainbow Rowell. I bought this in like 2016 or 2017 because you know everyone had been talking about it forever and everyone loved Rainbow Rowell. Since then there's been a lot with this book. Apparently it's like racist and don't love that. I hate that in fact. And also like apparently it's really sad and also I don't know. I don't really keep up with what's happening with Rainbow Rowell but a lot of people seem to not have savory opinions. It's kind of colored my opinion on the book, 
and I just, every time I'm trying to pick something to read, I skim right past that, and never. Next up we have a book that I, uh, this one I've read, most of the rest of them I think I've read, I think we got through most of the ones I haven't read. This is Cinder by uh, Marissa Meyer. I read this when I was seven, 16 or 17, really loved it, fled, like, like flew through it, read it in one sitting, read like a page of the second book, absolutely hated it. I never got past like the third chapter in the second book in the series. And at this point, like I don't think I'm going to continue to reread just the first book in the series, but I can't get through the rest of the series, so I'm going to get rid of it. This one, I think I gave three out of five stars last year. This is The Merciless by Danielle Vega. It's a YA horror. Um, it was fine. It was like not my favorite book. There's like exorcism shit in here. It's kind of intense. I, I didn't dislike it. I didn't love it. I don't think I'll ever reread it. That's my main reason for getting rid of it. It's just that because I'm storing all of my books for a year, anything that I don't think I'll pick up ever again, I don't think it's worth keeping. <laughs> this one is called Quiver. It's by Topsha Lerner. Um, this is erotica and they're like short stories. I bought this when I was a freshman in college. I read it when I was a freshman in college. I don't remember very much about it, but I know I'm not gonna read it again, so man. Someone will like it. I bought it at like a I bought it at like a spent um I don't remember, what was it called? It it went out of business, but they, they sold used books, I don't know. Um next this book is Dusty, which doesn't bode well. This is Three Dark Crowns by Kendara Blake. I here's the thing about this book. I bought this and was really excited about it and never even tried to read it. Like, I've never even started this book. I'm like, maybe I should keep it, but if I at any point feel, I was like Marie Kondoing and I help I pick this book up and I don't feel really anything about it. I think if I want to read it, if I come back to it and I'm like, damn, I should have kept that book, I'll pick up another copy. But it's doing no good sitting literally collecting dust on my shelf. Someone will want that book, especially, you know, some of these are relatively newer titles. You don't always see those at used bookstores. Like, I'm sure there's a teenager who will freak out when they see some of these titles. They'll be like, hell yeah, something that's not from 2008. Speaking of things that are from 2008, <laughs> I have Night World by L.J. Smith. I loved this collection of three, like, novellas, kind of. She thick. Um... This is the author of The Vampire Diaries, but I loved Spellbinder specifically in this collection. But I think if I ever want to reread this, I'll pick it up on ebook. It just takes up so much space and I reach for it almost never. And I think someone else will like it a little bit more than I do. This next book I was really excited for and it's just, I didn't like the book, like the book was poorly written. On paper it sounds incredible, in reality it was eh. That's Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. I know that's like the, that's the general consensus is that this is a really bad book. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I know anyone. I don't think I've ever heard anyone be like, yeah, I like this book. And no one likes this book. It, it was eh at best. I think I gave it three stars originally and then I think I dropped it two. So I either gave this two or three stars. Um, I'll never read it again. It's not, it's not good. It's not worth a reread. Next up I have Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is another one that I never got more than like a hundred pages into. Um, it's a little bit too superfluous for me. Too wordy. Like I, the writing is pretty but it's like too much. It's, it's too much for me to get through. I can't, I just, I just don't, I just didn't enjoy it any of the times I tried to read it. I just lit it every time, so, no. I know a lot of people love this book too. It's like a, for a really long time, everyone was like obsessed with it and I just hate it. <laughs> Oh, this is another one that I started and never finished. This is Furyborn 
by Claire Legrand. I never got more than like 30 pages into this one. I just, I like high fantasy less than I think I do. I always feel like I like high fantasy, but I have to be really invested in a high fantasy to get through it, if that makes sense. I just didn't care quite enough. I really like the idea of this book, but much like with Three Dark Crowns, if at any point I decide, man, I should have kept that book and read it, I'll pick up a new copy. Like, I have a big girl job buying an ebook version of Fury Born isn't gonna ruin me. This one, I, you know, the next couple I haven't read. This is Girl in Snow by Denya Kokovka. Um, I bought it on sale at Barnes and Noble from like the exceptional value section. Read like 20 pages and was like, I don't care. And I should have known this and I think I got excited because it like takes place in Colorado which is where I'm from but it like follows a few different people I don't know I didn't I just wasn't a fan so it's no for me and this next couple I still haven't read this is some kind of piece by Camilla Grebe and yep Asa Traff They're Swedish sisters, and this is a thriller that I bought when I was a freshman in college and never read. Never even picked it up. Never even, like, really considered picking it up. To be fair, I did buy it before I started actively reading thrillers. Um, but even since I started really actively reading thrillers, like, that, you, we all know that's my, like, adult genre of choice. If I'm reading adult, it's usually a thriller or I'm, like, who done it mystery those are my faves um i don't know just something about it not vibing <laughs> this next one i also bought at a used bookstore when i was in college and never read this is a dark room by joshua graham um i'm not gonna read this book this is another one of those ones that like i think if i had read it when i bought it i think i would have really liked it but at this point, I just have no desire to read it, so. Next up, we have Sherry Lupina's um, An Unwanted Guest, which was pretty good. I think I gave it four stars. Um, I read it last year. I just, it was, it was fine. I just don't think I'll read it again. Like, I liked it, and I honestly, I would, I would recommend it if you like whodunits. Um... I wouldn't have guessed the, like, why in this. I think I guessed the who, but I did not guess the why. But I, I thought it was pretty good. If you like that kind of Agatha, Christ Agatha Christie-esque whodunit, I thought it was fun. This next one I got from my used bookstore in Colorado Springs when I was, like, 19 and it's the alchemist it's a, a middle grade i believe and i read it and i don't remember anything about it and it's a series and i'm never gonna read the rest of them someone out there will like it who's not me this is another one that i started and never finished to re-seeing a trend i say all the time that like i don't make myself finish books i dnr books pretty consistently um, because if I'm really not feeling a book, I'm not going to make myself sit through it. I'd just rather pick up something else that I'll enjoy. This is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. As you know, everyone was ranting and raving about this, like, six years ago, five years ago, or whatever it was. You know, I got excited because at that time I was, like, not as well versed in, like, queer YA. I hadn't read very much of it, but as a queer person, I got excited that it was there. <laughs> picked it up. I don't like historical fantasy almost ever. Like, I just don't like historical fantasy. So why did I think I was gonna love this book? No one knows. Least of all me. I, I didn't. I never- I don't even think I got to page like 40. And I tried to read it like eight times. I- that's ridiculous. Why did I do that? 
That's so silly. Ugh. This next one is an adult horror. This is some Stephen King Nightmares and Dreamscapes. It's a short story collection. I don't love Stephen King. I said what I said. Um, my foot itches because I got bit by a mosquito. Oh god. Um, I don't love Stephen King. I've never, I haven't read very much Stephen King. Just on writing and like short stories. Um, I bought this at a used bookstore when I was like 15. I read it. It was I. I'll never read it again. These next few are like old school throwbacks. I've had these books since I was like 12, maybe 13. This is L.J. Smith's um, Dark Visions. This is the same author of Vampire Diaries in the Night World. I really loved L.J. Smith when I was, like I said, when I was like 13. Um, and I read this book, and I really liked this book. Oh, I still have a dog-eared page in here. I don't dog ear pages quite as much anymore. But I used to all the time. Um, yeah, I just think someone else will like this more than me. It's like a paranormal, vampire-y, YA romance. You know the drill. You know, the, it's the author of Vampire Diaries. You know the drill. These next two are the middle two books in a series. It's my favorite series when I was like 13. This is the Hush Hush series, but it's Silence and Crescendo. Like I said, the middle two. I lent Hush Hush to someone and never got it back. I don't remember who. Um, and I lost or maybe also lent out the last one. I don't know, but I don't know where that is either. But... If I ever really, really want to reread these books, I'll buy them on ebook, I guess. I just don't really feel like I need to have them on my shelf. Paranormal Fallen Angel Romance. I was obsessed with, like, a la Twilight, but more mature and a little sexier. Not, like, sex scenes, necessarily, but, like, a little... It's Twilight, but a little raunchier <laughs> is honestly how I'm going to describe it. Um... I was obsessed with it when I was a kid. I'm just not there anymore, you know. <laughs> um, my next one I read last year. This is Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen's An Anonymous Girl. I think I gave this four out of five. It was pretty good. Um, the more thrillers I read, the less I like this. And I didn't like their most recent one either. I don't remember what that one's called, and I haven't read The Wife Between Us, but yeah, it was pretty good, but um, this is another popular pretty recent title, so someone will love to pick it up, I'm sure. I love this cover, though. I'm sad that I don't get to have it on my shelf just because I like it aesthetically. Red's my favorite color. I don't know if you knew that. I feel like I've talked about this book a lot in my on my channel over the years. This is Peep Show by Joshua Braff. When did I talk about it? In the haul that I got it in and then like 40 TBRs, but I never read it. And at this point, once again, this is like one of my favorite covers of all time. I think it might also be on my like my favorite book covers video because I think it's beautiful, but nobody panic. The camera died. It's half an hour later. We should be able to get through the rest now. I was talking about Peep Show, but I don't know at what point it cut off. Um, bought it a lot of years ago. It's been on every TBR I've ever made. I've never read it. Maybe someone else will. Alright, this next one I've had for like, mm, just about 10 years at this point. Oh, that's weird. This was a required reading for me in school. Um, for my honors English class between 8th grade and 9th grade. It was for my, like, my freshman year honors English class. It's called The Secret Life of Pronouns, What Our Words Say About Us by James W. Pennebaker. I have actually read this a couple of times. There is some really interesting stuff in here, but I just don't see myself reaching for it again anytime soon. It's another one that, like, if, if I ever really feel like I need to dive back in, I'll buy a new copy. Maybe on ebook, so I don't have to 
have it on my shelf. But yeah, that book has been sitting on my shelf for nine years. Wild. Up right. This next one is The Knockout Queen by Ruthie Thorpe. I have not read this. I bought this. Um, this was my book of the month. One month. And usually I pick really well when I pick book of the, my book of the month. Like, I haven't read all of them, but when I like look at the, the stacks and I see all of the book of the months, I'm like, yeah, that was, that was a good choice. Like, I'm excited to read that. I look forward to reading that. This one, I don't know why I picked it. I don't want to read this book. <laughs> so I'm going to pass it along to someone who hopefully will read. Oh, these stacks are precarious. Um, someone who will read it and will enjoy it more than I will or would, I think. The so next two are the first two books in a series. This is Ever the Hunted and Ever the Brave. I read Ever the Hunted when I was a junior in college. Junior in college. Um, started Ever the Brave and hated it. Um, I think I gave four, Ever the Hunted four stars and then later moved it down to three stars because I'm a little bit a little bit more picky now than I, like, like I, I rate things a little bit more critically now than I did before. I still give a lot of fours and fives. I, I always have been very generous when it comes to rating scales. But I really liked the first one. The second one was meh. It's like a high fantasy, like friends to enemies to lovers. She's got magic. She ends up like cosmically connected to the king because of saving his life and I just didn't care. So, I don't think I'll reread the first one and I don't think I'll ever finish the second one, so what's the point in keeping them? This next book I bought because this is this is Christine's book. This is again but better, but here's the thing about this book. I never even started it. I follow Christine, I don't watch Christine's videos as much as I used to when I was younger, but she was one of the first booktubers that I ever followed, um, and who really caught my eye and I was like, oh, like there's an entire community of people just like chillaxing and talking about books, and you know, as, as a book lover that was really cool to me, um, but this book really isn't the kind of thing that I typically gravitate towards. I wanted to read it because it was Christine's book, but I bought it a couple of years ago and I've never even, like I've never even, most of the books I have that I haven't read, I've at least been like, ah, oh, maybe I'll read The Disasters today. Like maybe, and then I'll be like, ah, oh, but I actually really want to read this one. I don't even think I've considered picking this book up. Like I don't even think it's like come up. I think I just have been letting it sit on my shelf. So, to, this, to the, to the bookstore it goes. Okay, maybe I lied when I said I had read all of the rest of these. Um, this is Passenger by Alexandra Bracken. I've had this for like five years. Um, everyone was obsessed with these books back in the day. But here's the thing. I've not picked it up and I don't know if I'm going to. This one does sound like something I might enjoy, but I don't like historical fiction. But this is like sci-fi-esque, because you know I got like the time travel element, she's a musician, both of those things I'm very much into. But this is another one that if at any point I'm like, man, I should have held on to Passenger, I'll just buy a new one. There's no sense in it sitting on my shelf and collecting dust if I don't have any intention of reading it. Even if I might someday, you know. that's I feel like that someday is not good enough, if that makes sense. <laughs> Next one I hated. Um, this is one of my least favorite books of 2020. It's Murder Trending by Gretchen McNeil. Um, if you watched my least favorite books of 2020 video or any of the times I talked about this book, you'll know that I like really was disappointed and I didn't like it at all. Um, I think I gave it a two. I think I'd maybe give it a three at first and then dropped it to a two. It's not very good. I didn't like it. So 
someone else, but a lot of people do really like it. So I hope that someone picks this up and loves it. This, you know, they, what did they say? It was like a dystopian, like reality TV breakfast club, people die. I don't know. I didn't like it. it was not my thing. And then, of course, we've got Grim Lovelies, which was one of the first books that I read last year. And it was pretty good. I, I liked it. Um, I think I gave it a three or a four stars. I don't remember off the top of my head. But I just don't think I'm going to continue this series. I don't think I feel quite passionately enough about it to continue reading on. And I don't think I'll reread it. Like, I'm glad that I read this one. I enjoyed it while I read it. But... I just think that's enough for me. Alright. White Cat, I own an ebook copy of already. It's White Cat by Holly Black. I do actually really like this book. Um, I reread it last year. I've read it a good, a good couple of times in my life. This is the first book in a series. But like, the series I own on ebook. So I feel like because I'm, I don't like it quite enough to finish the rest of it in like physical copies, and I own the rest of them on ebook, so I think it makes more sense just to pass along that one. Alrighty, and then we've got Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I picked this up because I love superheroes. Um, superhero media is one of my faves. I enjoy it, but this one I just couldn't get into. I read about half of this one. And then DNF'd it. Never picked it up again. <laughs> yeah, I, I DNF'd it. I never picked it back up. Um, I know a lot of people really love this. I think I maybe just am not a huge fan of Marissa Meyer. Like, I think I, con like, I conceptually, as far as the ideas of these stories go, I really enjoy the concepts and the thoughts and the ideas that are going into Marissa Meyer books. However, I don't enjoy reading them typically. Like I, 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 Cinder was an exception to the rule, which seems to be that I don't like her books. So, someone else will be very happy to find that one, I'm sure. One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus is mediocre at best. YA whodunits tend to be kind of obvious. I think this had a shitty, like, plot twist that I didn't like. I'll never pick it up again. It's a bummer because I was really excited about this one, but once again, someone will be very happy to find that, I'm sure. This next one might surprise you. I'm actually going to pass along the Avant-Garde's Volume 1. This one's also kind of dusty. I really dust my books, I think. Um, <laughs> this is a graphic novel. I read it last year during Pride Month, I believe. And I did really like it. I just don't know if I will continue. Because I'm moving... Like, I'm not going to continue the series anytime soon. I don't know if by the time I come back, I will want to pick it up again. And the art is beautiful. The story is great. I think someone will be so happy and lucky to have this on their shelf instead of sitting in my book waiting to see if I ever want to continue, you know? Like, I think it's just too much of a question mark. Someone else will love it. That seems like a better outcome for this little book than, than me. All right, we got two more. Next we have Violent Ends. This is a novel. Each chapter is written by a different author. We have a million of them. Let's just read a couple. We got Mindy Scott. We got Courtney Summers. We got Neil and Brendan Schusterman. We've got Eliza Nader. We've got Sean David Hutchinson. Like, some, like, solid, like, big-name writers in this one. And I did actually really enjoy it. This is following the events before and after a school shooting 
um, and 17 perspectives, including my favorite one because I just thought it was so like out of the box. One of these chapters is from the perspective of the gun, which is really cool. Um, and I did, I did really enjoy it. You know, it was very sad, obviously, but the thing that I enjoyed about this is it wasn't about the shooter. You know, it was like a school shooting narrative that was about uh, the other people whose lives it upended. And um, I thought it was really good, but I don't think I'll ever read it again. So, also I love this cover. I, once again, I think I just, I just love red. It's my favorite color. So when I see, like, pretty red, I'm like, ah, beautiful. And last, but certainly not least, we have Adam Silvera's Infinity Sun. Um, this is another one that I read some of and DNF'd. I, I don't know how I feel about Adam Silvera, because I love They Both Die at the End. Sitting on top of this stack. I love this book. It's one of my, like, favorite vibey, I love the, like sci-fi realism, magical realism, whatever you want to call it. I feel like it's more sci-fi than, like, fantasy, but, um, I love that setting, and I loved the characters, and I loved the story, but every other Adam Silvera book I've tried to read I haven't liked. So much like with Cinder, I'm kind of afraid that they both die at the end is, like, a fluke for me. Like, like, it's the exception, not the rule. I was really excited because I was like, Adam Silvera wrote a fantasy book, Fuck yeah. And then didn't like the characters. So I quit reading it. But Adam Silver is a really big name and a lot of people really enjoy his work. So someone I'm sure will be stoked to find that at the bookstore. So there you have it, y'all. A uh, whole, whole collection stack of, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it's 40 exactly. I think I said at the beginning, about 40. Yeah, 40 books. The biggest dumb haul I've ever had. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I do plan on making a more, like, life update announcement -y video talking about the move, what my plans are. I really would like to... I've been having the worst, the worst reading slump for, like, nine months now. Since, like, August. And I had, like, little dips where it got better. Like... In February of this year, I read a few books, and in, like, November slash August of last year, I read a few books. But on the whole, this year I've only read, like, six books, and it's halfway through the year. Last year, by this point, I had read upwards of 50. I'd read, like, 60 books at this point last year, and I haven't even read 10. Um, so I've just been having a really, really rough time reading, and when I'm not reading, I feel weird making book content. Like, I just don't know what content to make when I'm in the middle of a reading slump. So if you have any suggestions or anything you want to see from me, please let me know because I want to be making videos. I just don't know what to do when I'm not reading, you know? Does that make sense? I've been writing. Maybe I'll make some writing vlogs. I don't know. We'll see. Um, anyway, the next few months of my life it's gonna be a lot of journey. I'm gonna go home for a couple of for a couple of months, which is longer than originally intended because we had a little bit of a fiasco. <laughs> but um, yes, I'm very excited. Very excited. Um, hopefully, we'll get some more videos going. I'm so sorry I've been a wall. I've missed you guys. I will see you soon. I make no promises for next week, but I will see you soon. Goodbye, guys.